Amen. I hope you're ready for the word today. I, it's a good one. Awesome. All right. I want to pray over this, and then I just pray that today, this is what I do when I listen to a word. I kind of like pray that my heart and my mind will be like a blank canvas, and, you know, I just pray that the Holy Spirit would just break out the highlights. And every time I listen to a, a sermon, a message, a teaching, I always try to pull out nuggets out of that that God wants to really just apply to my life. Amen? Well, let's just pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this word. I declare that this word changes hearts and lives. And I thank you for all that you are doing in this hour. And I declare that every one of our destinies will come forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I got good news and bad news. For some of you, the bad news is going to be bad news. For some of it's going to be good news. On the good news, some of it's going to be good for some people and bad for some people. Had a lady recently from our city message me like, hey, I'm thinking about trying out your church. I said, don't try it out. Ask God if you're supposed to be here or not. And uh, if you try it out, that means you're, you're trying out in the flesh. Okay. And uh, she said, well, my church does this, 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 and this. Does your church do that? I said, no, your church doesn't. Your church isn't even meeting. And she said, oh, and I, I said, ma'am, I hate to break it to you, but your church will never go back to normal. She said, oh, yeah, it will. And uh, I said, well, things probably won't. But the church that's about to happen in America is going to look a little bit more like this right here than we've ever seen it before. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. Well, well my pastor, he'll never do that. Well, you know, a lot of people that's told me that when everything started, things are shifting. Leadership in churches are shifting. Some pastors are leaving places, different things. And so this is what you got to understand. The church, the old church is no more. Okay? Uh, look at your job. Is it the same as it's always been? Or do you got to wear a mask? You got to have that hand, Sandy. You know, you, you can't, things are different. I mean, talk about kids going back to school. They're only going to, like, we have got some letters. They say only letting 70% of the kids come back. They got to wear a mask. They got to do this and got to do that. School won't be the same. Some schools aren't even doing sports. I got a friend of mine who his church exploded. And they have over 1,000 people. But here's what happens. The, the place where they live, they can only do services of 50 people. So my friend has now rented three other buildings, and he has five services to make sure they can get every. And you have to register for a service to come to one of them. People are doing what they can do. And some of his people in his church are like, well, well when are we going to do this, this, and this? And he said, look, we're trying to run four, possibly five locations, 50 people in, 50 people out. because that's." And he said, everything's different. Now, I don't know about you. I like change. I like different. I like shaking it up. And so people say that, well, this may be a new season. You've heard a lot of apostles and prophets say this is a new era. But I'm just telling you, there's a new wind from God hitting the church. And it's a very strategic and timely wind. And it's a powerful wind. And so what you got to understand is everything is changing. But here's the number one thing that has to change right now. Your mindset. Uh, I, I know so many people who have said during the, 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 the four months of the COVID that, that, that their finances have been better than ever. And then I see some people who are, are desolate. They're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know some people who have shut down churches, shut down businesses. And I know some people who've started businesses. And so what you have to do is you have to listen to what God is saying and walk according to him during this time. The, the number one voice in your life has always been and will always be the gift of the Holy Spirit who is always speaking. And right now, our world is in a, in a confused time. I mean, it's weird because you got Republicans and Democrats saying different things, CNN and Fox News saying different things, but Holy Spirit speaks to every person the same thing. He speaks to every person the same way. You know, Holy Spirit's not a Republican or a Democrat, if you didn't know, you know, and, and he, he speaks the same to, to every generation. He speaks different. Uh, he doesn't speak different to anybody because of the color of their skin, the denomination they are. He's just speaking right now. And so you, you're going to have to understand that we listen to the Holy Spirit, and I am so excited about that. I heard a, Apostle Tim Sheet say this recently, that all the streams that God has is forming into one big river. And the people that aren't listening to him, they're not going to flow with it. He said what God is, is about to do is, is unique and it is powerful. 
There has never been more prophetic dreams and prophetic words re released than we have in this hour. Everybody's got a word. But the Lord told me recently the times for prophetic words are about to come to an end. Prophetic action is what is coming. And so you're going to have to give action to the words. And I really believe that this is a, a season that many true voices are about to arise and many leaders are about to arise like never before. Now, let me tell you about 25 years ago when I rededicated my, my life for the seventh time. I, I came in, back into church and this is what we did for fun. There was a revival within 50 to 75 miles of Texarkana every night of the week. There was no Facebook for the younger generation. There really, there has not always been an internet. Like my kids were like, you didn't have Facebook when you were a kid? I'm like, they didn't have the internet when I was a kid. Well, do you have cell phones? I'm like, no, we didn't. My dad's first phone in his car was a rotary. He had a rotary phone in his car. They're like, dad. And so 25 years ago, this is what we did. When we got off work, we found the nearest revival and we went. And there were three or four evangelists who would go from different churches around. And if you're over 40, you know what I'm talking about. And the same people would go to the same churches. And all the churches would get together and they would have revival meetings. And then after service, you would rush out back and get a cassette. And you would listen to the cassette of the same message you just heard. And you would get that inside of you. But then what happened is about 15 years ago, 10 years later... They got conferences. There was conferences within 100 miles of your house all the time. And I love going to conferences. Then I started speaking at conferences. And then DVDs and CDs came on. Man, they were awesome. And then all of a sudden you would have that and you would buy them and you'd give them to your friends and all of this stuff. And then five years ago, 10 years later after that, people really got big into YouTube and watching and streaming and all of this. And all of a sudden, I had a friend of mine who was an evangelist, and he said, Joe, this is crazy. I've been preaching in the same churches for 10, 15, 20 years. And the churches, some of them are getting smaller, and the honorariums are getting smaller. And so I can't do what I used to do. I have to change, keep preaching the same message, but everything's different. Times are changing. I remember when I was a little kid, my dad would say, boy, that was my name until I was 34. Boy, if you need anything in this world, you go to Sears. Okay, so Sears is vacant now, but when I was a kid, if you needed anything, now, son, I say, Ezra, if you need anything, you go to Amazon, you know, Prime account. And so things are changing, but the people that get frustrated with life the most are the ones that do not flow with the Holy Spirit. They don't change with the Lord. When God is doing something new, when he's doing something fresh, they're stuck in something you know, some people, they ain't changed their wardrobe in 25 years, and that's cool. But, but, but God is always changing. God is always moving, and you have to know what he is saying. I'll give you this to step on somebody's toes. God gave some of you a book, a song, a ministry. He gave it to you in one season, and you just can't keep praying it comes to pass. you got to work until it comes to pass. This is a season you're going to produce the very thing that is inside of you. So I talked about five years ago. But now I'm going to talk about today. The church is changing today. The world is changing today. You got to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. You got to hear what the Holy Spirit is doing. And you got to flow with them. Whenever my wife and I, we try to be as positive as we can, Philippians 4 and 8. But whenever the COVID broke out and there was a quarantine, we thought, wow, extra family time, extra project time. Extra time to sit back and work on things that God has called us to. The busyness of life has stopped. And during that time, we didn't sit around and watch the news all the time. But we were active in what God was speaking over our life. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. So you are not foreigners or even guests, but rather you are the children of the city of the holy ones with all of the rights as family members of the household of God. You are arising like a perfectly fitted stone of the temple, and our lives are being built together upon the idea foundation laid by the apostles and prophets. And best of all, you are connected to the head cornerstone of the building, the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself. So let me give it to you like this. You're connected to Jesus Christ. You got the Holy Spirit. 
You are not a foreigner in America. You are not a guest in Texarkana or the city that you live in or wherever you're watching online. You are a resident. You need to act like it. You need to speak like it. You need to build accordingly to what God is saying. A, a lot of people, they just kind of go through life and they're like, I'm not going to ruffle any feathers. Those days are over. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to kind of mind my own business. Well, let me tell you, when Nehemiah came into a city, he started building. This is your time to build. Build on the dreams that's inside of you. Build on everything. I love that it says you are not a foreigner or even a, a guest. Listen, you are a resident. This is your land. You've got to fight for what God has put inside of you. And what I like to do, at least an hour a day, I, I, I shut out the world. I usually message Autumn and say, hey, I'm about to go pray for an hour. Put my phone down, and, uh, and, and I pray for one hour solid over our city, over our church, over my family. Why? Because I'm a resident of this city. I'm just not passing through. I'm here. I'm ready to pray. I'm ready to see a difference. I'm ready to see some change happen. You know, and what God has called me to is the spiritual climate. What, what has he called you to? You may be in the medical field. You may be in the education realm. You know, I have no idea what you're called to do, but you know that, and you got to start moving forward in that. First, uh, first Timothy 3 and 5, 15, excuse me. But if I'm delayed, this is, this is Paul talking to Timothy, but if I'm delayed in coming to you, you already have the instructions on how to conduct the affairs of the church of the living God. Yes, every household and the supporting pillar of a firm foundation of the truth. Now, now let me tell you this. Some people in the old church used to always call the pastor. I remember working for pastors that their phone rang all the time with some of the smallest, pettiest things that people just wanted to run by their pastor. And actually, I, I remember one time I was with a pastor, and somebody called and said, I'm trying to buy a used car. What color should I buy? And I said, just say pink. Just say something crazy, chartreuse. Just something crazy. But, but the thing is, listen, you know what to do. This is your time to stand. You know what to do. I remember one time Autumn and I was thinking about some different endeavors and, 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 and business ideas, and we're talking about financial stuff, and she said something to me. She said, Joe Dawson, you know what to do. I'm going to bed. You and God hash it out, and let me know in the morning. And I was like, but see, she spoke something to me. She said, you know what to do. And so my wife affirmed me that she was going to bed and that I need to stay up because I already knew. And then I started speaking to the Lord, and the Lord said, you do know what to do. You've just been scared to move in it. Thank you all. Okay, this is the season that you know what to do. I remember one time I had a, a, a spiritual son, and I, 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 did, I still have him. He's just kind of lost right now. He's finding his way back. But he would always want me to pray. I got to pray for this. I got to pray for this. And I said, why have you been praying for the same thing for years when God has only given you 87 prophetic words on the same thing. You know what to do. Just do it. And he said, is it really that simple? And I said, yes. And friends, I have wasted a lot of my life praying for things that I already knew the answer to. But isn't it? I'm just praying about that. I'm just praying about that. I'm just praying about that. And you know what God is speaking to you. You know the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you have a psalms, a teaching, a tongue, a revelation, interpretation, let all things be done for edification. So let me ask you, what, what is your gift? I mean, what's your gift? Now, here's the thing. If, uh, if you got a gift and it's hid, what good is it doing the church? What's it good doing your coworkers, your family members? What, what good is your gift if you hide it? Why would you hide your gift? It needs to come out. Like if David and Carmen and Diana didn't get up here and sing, y'all be stuck with me. And, and, and y'all don't want that. You got to have people showing their gift. Think about the greatest book that you ever read besides the Bible. What if that person wouldn't have wrote it? They hid that gift. What about your favorite um, type of vehicle? What if somebody didn't release that knowledge? Whoever came up with air conditioner, I love them. They're phenomenal people. you got to understand, you've got a gift. Isaiah 55, 8 and 11. 
For my thoughts about mercy are not like your thoughts, for my thoughts are different than yours. They are as high as the heavens are above the earth. That's his thoughts. So my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours as the snow and the rain fall from the heaven and do not return until they accomplish their purpose, soaking the earth and causing it to sprout with new life, providing seeds to sow and bread to eat. This is so good. It says, so also will be the word that I speak. It does not return until it is to me if it's unfulfilled. My words perform my purpose and fulfill the missions I sent it to accomplish. Another translation says, so my word, this is Isaiah 55, 11, So my words will go forth out of my mouth and it will not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it to. Now, let me ask you, when we say, when you say, when you think about this, a lot of times people, they talk about the written word. Sometimes they talk about the, they think it's the prophetic word or a word that God is speaking over a nation. Well, let me talk about you. What prophetic word has he spoke over you? And why is it still void? It needs to be, it needs to come to pass. Like, man, there's times when you do conferences, you see the same people. It's weird. All over America. You'll go preach here, they'll be there. Here, there, and here, there. And so when they come, they always want like another prophetic word. I'm like, look, the prophetic word I gave you in that last city will be void if I give you another one. Go back and do the last one. You know, when it talks about how light was created, God said, let there be light one time and light was still going on. It's the same way with the prophetic word. When God calls you to do something, that word is still out there. It is still alive until you do it. You know what the world is lacking? The, the innovation that we keep inside of us. The innovation that, that, that is inside of you, the world may be lacking it. I just believe that, that this church has manuals inside of it. I mean, so many manuals and books and, and teachings coming forth. So this is what the Lord is basically saying in Isaiah 55, 11. The word that I give you, it must be done. It can't be used until it is completed. It, it's got, does this make sense to y'all? That the word will not come back void. God doesn't give a word and then, and then brings it back in. It's kind of like a fisherman who refuses to bring in his hook until he's got a fish on it. The word is out there, and this is where people struggle. When God gives them a prophetic word and they know that it's lingering over them and they don't want it, they want to go to something else. God doesn't work like that. When he gives, you can go a different direction, but you're not going to prosper. See, when you don't prosper, you may be the best seed, but when you're not in good ground, you can get a seed that's not quite as good, but, but the ground could be better, and they'll even prosper more. I remember one time, I was at my, one of my dad's cattle farms when I was young, and I said, Dad, I said, uh, you know, some of the, the grass is not as good as last year. He said, oh, I bought this seed, and the seed that we replant is not as good as, as last year. And I said, what do you mean? He said, the ground's the same. The year after that, best grass we ever had out there. But my dad said, I bought some, some better seed this year. See, you're in good ground. And so the problem is when you're not succeeding with God, when you're, when you're not happy, when you're not fulfilled, something's not right. Something's not aligned properly. But let me tell you how things are, are, are going to happen. Okay, old church was this. You have a pastor, you know, leading the congregation, the, you know, the army of God. And so the army of God, the congregation sits back there and says, go, pastor, go, pastor, go, go, pastor, go, pastor, go. And the pastor's up there, not the ecclesia. Everybody's lined up. Everybody. Go, everybody. Everybody's going. It's just like, like people say, I remember in, the, in some different churches I was in, they come up to the pastor, what's the Lord saying? And they would tell them. And people ask me, what's the Lord saying? I don't know. What's the Lord saying to you? Everybody here's got a word. Everybody's got a gift. Is that making sense? We all got to do something. We've all got to move forward. Prophetic words are for two things, to, to encourage you, and they're great weapons of warfare. See, okay, this is my sog right here. This little joker, I love this knife, but it could be like a weapon, okay? But, but what good is it if I got to cut something and I keep it in my pocket, it's like a prophetic word. This is what happens when the enemy comes against you. 
oh, this is my prophetic word. That's my prophetic word. I got something for you today, Joker. Because that prophetic word, the enemy will lie to you. Excuse me, devil. You said I'm not going to do that, but God's already told me through this. And I was at Roar Church, and I had three people confirm that prophetic word. I'm going to do what I was called to do. I'm going to do with the prophetic word. The word will not go back void. Because if God gives you, here's your, okay. if God gives you a word, and you don't do it, and you die, he ain't going to take that word back. He's just going to apply it to somebody else. How many times have you ever just felt like, like there were so many prophetic words in a region that, that were never tapped into? They're still out there. If God spoke them, they're still out there. God told me recently that we're going to re-tap into to wells, deep wells of revival here. The, the prophetic words that have, have, have just, they're out there, but nobody ever tapped into them. They're out there. Y'all tracking with me? Good. Now I'm going to give you four things. You ever seen those old um, movies kind of like in medieval times where they would get a battering ram and they would hit a, a door 171 times before it would open? Well, let me tell you what battering rams are. They're prophetic words. They're decrees. They're prayers. And they're fasting. Those four things will open doors and open seasons. And I had a guy I was talking to recently in our network. He just said, I just feel like my season's never coming. I just feel like no doors are ever going to open for me. I said, oh, the doors are there. You're just knocking like this. Sissy knock. No, you, you got you to gotta get out there and you got to knock on that door. You got to kick that door in with that battering ram. This is the prophetic word you gave me, God. I'm going to decree. I'm going to declare. I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. And I had a guy ask me, he said, how come everything that you feel like God speaks to you, it comes to pass? I said, because this is how I knock. And I don't stop until it opens. I mean, I don't stop until it opens. Hey, crazy story. I bought my wife a new car about a year ago. But uh, about a month or so ago, at 430 in the morning, this dude was knocking on my door. It was an officer. And I came to the door like at 4 in the morning. Dude, dude knocked. He was in shape. He knocked for like 90 seconds straight. I thought he was going to break my glasses knocking. And I opened the door, and I said, yeah. He said, do you have this type of car? I said, no, I traded it about 10 months ago, sir. Sorry. And he walked off. And I said, okay. But I was like, I'm impressed with this guy's knock. This is how we got to knock on heaven's door. This is how we got to. That dude, I was like, what in the world is going on? Hey, I thought he was shaking the whole house knocking. But, but he was persistent in his knock. This is how we do. God, you gave me this word. Oh, my hand's hurting. I'm... No. You, you, you got to keep knocking. You got to be ready. See, we are strategically positioned here for God's glory to be his voice. And I feel it so strong in my spirit. And I'm going to tell you three things that we're about to start seeing. One, we're going to start seeing a fresh moves of, of God's spirit all over America in different places. And, and this is what, what I, I, I can understand. I got a friend of mine who said God is moving in their church and their revival hub like crazy. Like over the last six weeks, so powerful they can't even preach. So powerful they can't even do praise and worship. Just God shows up. And then she said, and half a mile down the road, we have churches that won't even open. And she says, I don't understand. Well, I don't understand either. But all I know are the ones that are wanting it, they're about to receive. The second thing, angelic activity. You're about to see angelic activity. And if you don't know how to pray for angelic activity, get Tim Sheet's book on it. It is so powerful. The Bible talks so much about angelic activity, yet nobody ever talks about it. We're talking about it. Third thing, you're going to see more apostles and prophets declaring and prophesying and decreeing. And when they prophesy something, if it's a national word, tap into it. If it's a geographical word, tap into it. If it's over an industry, tap into that word. Because when you tap into the word of the Lord, you've got the authority of God behind you and you start moving forward. I think about a year ago, everybody started prophesying entrepreneuring, entrepreneuring, entrepreneuring. So I started telling people, if you entrepreneur, start something create something, put your hands to something, 
uh, I heard a, a two or three prophets that I really love. They recently were talking about that scribe anointing coming back in a strong way over the next 12 months. Michelle and Jeff, they're ready for y'all, so just call them. And so we, we just start writing. This is a time that it might be a blog, it might be a Facebook post, but if you're called to write something, start writing. Get that out. Business owners, get ready. Acts 2, 17, 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. I'm still getting visions and dreams. I'm mid middle age. And, but this is what I want you to understand. I had a prophetic vision two weeks ago. We were in pre-service prayer at 9 a.m. in the kids' church room. Plug. But I was sitting there, and I kept seeing the same vision over and over. It was a lion staring at me, laying down, and he stood up. He did a small stretch, and he shook his mane. But during prayer, I saw it over and over and over. So I started studying, why does a lion shake its mane? And so I started watching videos. And every time a lion would stand up and shake his mane, he would roar or he would move forward. And... The first vision I had after that was Narnia. My kids love Narnia. And every time Aslan, every time Aslan roared, everybody stopped. Well, what year is this in the Hebrew calendar? 5780, the year of the voice, the year of the roar. It seems like everybody in the world's voice is being heard right now besides the true voice of God. And when the line roars, everything stops. But what happens is a lot of voices, good, bad, real, and counterfeit, all start. They're trying to be heard. Everybody's trying to be heard. But when the roar of God comes, everybody's got to take notice of it. And that's what's coming. The world is fighting for power, but the power they're fighting for actually belongs to God. Thank you. It's the kingdom of God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look at America. I don't think this is what heaven's speaking over America right now, but it's coming. It's going to happen. See, let's go back to Genesis. It's kind of where it all began anyway, right? Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let's give them dominion. Well, in verse 28, it says, then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. And so when you, when, you, when you think about that, we've got dominion. We've got the power in our words. God spoke it. He said, let there be light. He spoke, make man in, in my image. Just, let's do it like that. And then all of a sudden you sit around and you're like, well, God, how do I have dominion? Well, let's go New Testament, Matthew 16, 19. I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth what is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth what, should, what is released in heaven. So when you go before God, you can actually have the keys of the kingdom to lock and unlock in this earth realm. Do you understand that so much power you have? Now, if, if you trust somebody, what do you give them? The keys. When, when, you, when you trust somebody, you, you give them the keys. When, well, God can give you keys. Your key may be a book. Your, your key may be a business. It may be something to break an addiction in your family. You have all types of keys that can unlock things. Well, one of the things that we unlock, we help unlock people. You know, I, I, some of the best prophetic words I've ever received in my life was somebody who's never prophesied. And, in fact, I have some friends of mine that said somebody changed their church by one prophetic word, and they've never spoke a prophetic word in their life. They were nervous, beads of sweat running down their head, and they came up to the pastors and said, i got to tell you what the Lord said. And they said they stumbled. It, they were stumbled all over it. They were nervous, and they spoke the word, and they said, that's the word, and it shifted their whole church. You have that word inside of you for somebody when you speak, it is an actual key that unlocks somebody or locks something. Think about the power of your word. There's some times that you lock up financial breakthrough or you unlock it. I had somebody the other day that tell me, oh, I got this physical infirmity, and I'm always going to have that. You just locked up healing. You know, you got to unlock some stuff. You've got the power in your word. You've got the power to break things. You've got that power. It is that key that is inside of you. Isaiah 61 and 2. 
It says, rise up in splendor and be radiant, for your light has dawned, and Yahweh's glory now streams from you. I want you to think about you. You Rise up with splendor and be radiant, because Yahweh's glory now streams from you. You've got God's glory that can literally stream and flow from you. Does that not just make you think, like, wow, I got that power in me. And it says, look carefully, darkness blankets the earth and a thick gloom covers the nations. But Yahweh rises up above you and the brightness of his glory appears over you. Y'all grab that. There, there's nations right now that hundreds of people a day are being slaughtered because they're believers. You know what? And somebody says something over our, and hurts our feelings. We get upset. They're losing their lives because darkness is blanketing the earth. But there is hope. It is the hope in you. And what is inside of you that can be a key to unlock something? That can. I remember back when it was legal to go to like have restaurants and everything was open, I would always go into a restaurant or a coffee shop, and I would always be like, I, I want to I unlock something. And I would just walk by and say things to people. And then when I would go back into those same places like Starbucks, I'd go back in, and the person I spoke that to would be, hey, man, you unlocked something in me. And they're not even believers. And I'm, I said, how did you do that? And I just said, well, the Spirit of God loves you so much that well, I don't believe in God. I said, I don't care if you do because I do. But the Spirit of God... Came, when I walked by, you said, tell them this. This is what God wants you to know. They're like, man, how would you do that? I said, the same way you can do it. When you know him, you'll hear from him, and you'll speak on his behalf. And Isaiah 61 and 2, that's what it says. So basically, it's time to rise, and it is time to shine, for the glory of God is upon you. And this is just what I feel today. And I'm going to be real honest about this. I was in warfare this morning. I got up about 4.30. I was, I was praying for, for this service. And then it's so funny, but one of my intercessors messaged me, hey, I'm up with you. And I said, okay, thank you. And this is what I felt the Lord saying, that, that there are some people here today or watching online that you're going to be set free today. I mean, you're going to be set free that you're going to be able to rise and shine. And this is why I think it's so important by that 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 vision I had about the, the lion shaking his mane, that, that when, when God's roar comes forth, and I think it was Lana Vosser who had a word about a year ago, that, that she saw a huge lion making its way towards America in her spirit, and it had a foot on each corner of America. And when it roared, everything changed. Make, make sure that you're positioned right. You ever been on a canoe trip, and when, and when you took off, you weren't positioned right, and there goes that canoe? I mean, I ain't ever done that, but Matt has. But the thing is, you need to be positioned right. I did do that once on a kayak trip. It was crazy. But you need to be in position because it's time to rise and shine. And you know, some of the, the biggest things that you may do is God may call you to be an intercessor for your family. That's your number one assignment on earth. You may be the, the person who, who intercedes for your family, the one who just you know, they get up in the morning or stays up at night or just sits down. And, you know, so I don't forget people. I write everybody's name down. I just write everybody's name down. I just start writing and I just start speaking over everybody's life every day because I want people to be in, in, in the rightful place. And I tell you the, the good thing about this season, because a lot of people talk about the bad. God is going to bless some people really strong in this season. There's a lot of people who are so confused and they don't understand how to get through this season that they've almost given up in some areas. But, but God is, if you will just trust God through this, I mean, the season that we're going on in America, it's like a, it's not a canoe trip, it's a rapid trip. But hang on, you're going to be okay. I promise you, you're going to be okay. God's going to get us through this. And when you get through this, you're going to come better. You're going to come out better on the other side. And so I just... I think differently than a lot of people. You don't grow in the good times. You grow in the bad times. And when the bad times are really severe, you grow even more. And that's how I, my wife and I view our life right now. We're going to grow through these seasons. We've learned a whole lot. And it's just, it's, 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 you can look at it as one of two ways, an awful season or a season that I'm going to take what comes my way and I'm going to make the best out of it. 
And that's just what I feel God is saying. He, he needs some people right now to rise and shine. And with that last scripture I read, you know, when darkness blankets the earth, God is looking for somebody to rise up. You know, when your light shines the best is, is when it's the darkest. So I just want to pray for every person here today. I want to pray for breakthrough. And then I think we're just going to hit a prophetic flow and we're going to just prophesy the word of the Lord. And, and so we're just going to start, start off like that. So if you want prayer and you know that this is going to be a season and, and I'll tell you one thing that, that has to happen, you're going to have to lose a mindset. That's one of the biggest things God's speaking to me about is you, we're going to have to change our mindset on just not church, but life. I mean, I bet your business is a little different than it was six months ago that you work at. Things are different. Flow with the Holy Spirit. You know, if you're with a crazy person on a canoe trip and they're like, oh, man, it's going to take a hard turn. It's, the water's going to speed up. Some people are like, yeah. And the other people start speaking in tongues. You know, well, I kind of do both at the same time. But I mean, it's like I'm ready for the I'm ready for the yeah. And so in this season, God is looking for a voice to be heard. He's looking for people that, that he can just speak through. It may be at your work. You may be the one ray of hope in that whole entire place. Don't go in there and, and be another negative voice, but say, no, no, no. I know that God is about to do something, and I know he is going to make himself known, and he is going to show himself faithful. And people may be like, well, I don't know wh what you're thinking about. Well, just trust God and watch. And so God is just going to use some people right now. So I'm going to pray. And then we're just going to go into a time of prayer. And I just, I'm just believing for some radical breakthroughs. And this is the thing I want us all to pray. That during this time of prayer, that we have a mindset shift on something in our life. And there's been times that I go to the Lord on a regular basis. And I say, God, you're going to shift my mind right now. And how do you want me to see this? And do you know what? 99 point, I'm just kidding, 100% of the time when God shows me something, it's completely opposite of the way that I thought going into prayer. And I'm like, God, but I've been like chasing after you hard for 25 years. And I go back again and I say, God, how do I need to see this situation? And he spins it. And I'm like, God, I didn't even see that. And so his ways, the scripture I read, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our, our thoughts. And listen, you're not always right. And on a lot of things, the way I think, I'm hardly ever right on stuff like that. Because I say, God, I know what's really going on right now in America. This is going on. Then I go to prayer, and God says, oh, no, I'm just getting people positioned. And I said, you know, if things are good, if things are all good, you know, then nobody would really be seeking God. But now things aren't. There is a cry for God like I've never heard before in my life. And I think that's why this season just intrigues me so much because people are hungry for God. They're hungry for the things of the Lord right now. So, Father God, I thank you for every person here. And I declare over every life in this place and every person online, Holy Spirit, that you speak to every one of us in any area that our mind it is not properly aligned with you, God. You start to shift it. You start to change some things in our life. And we start to see properly. We start to think properly. And I just even feel the, the Holy Spirit saying right now, there is about to be a lot of mended relationships. There's some things that you or somebody else acted um, just kind of out of character in. But God is about to shift some things. I even feel the Lord... Even I just saw, heard the word provision and promotion. A lot of people, even at your work, you're about to get some promotions and provisions. And I just saw things opening up for some. And when, when, when God blesses you and you are about to be blessed, understand this, please. It's just not for you. It is for the advancement of the kingdom of God. The more that God blesses you, the, the more of a voice that you have in society to, to speak forth the things of the kingdom. And I even feel the Lord saying, yeah, he's going to ask you to do some things that you don't want to do. He's going to speak to you about some things that you're like, man, God, I, I just feel comfortable. Being comfortable is not a part of this season. But I just feel the Lord saying, if people could understand what I have for them, it would blow them away. And I just feel the just overwhelming love of the Father about to come on some people right now. And, and this is... Uh, I said this a few weeks ago on, on a post on social media. I feel the Lord saying, pray one more time and see what happens. Just pray that prayer one 
more time 